Hey there fellow cake friends and welcome to this ranunculus tutorial video. Today I'm going to show you how to make this gorgeous peachy sugar ranunculus. I've been making sugar flowers for the past five years and I can't wait to share some of what I've learned with you. If you want more sugar flower and cake videos don't forget to subscribe right down there and like this video. And without further delay, let's get to the tutorial. Check out the full blog post in the description box below and I'll show you what you need to start creating the petals. For cutters, you're going to need a 50mm, 65mm and 80mm 5 petal cutter. Your two teardrop cutters that I've bent to be a little wider in shape. A ball tool, a veining tool, a cell pin, rolling pin, foam mat. You'll also need shortening. And I'm gonna be using sugar flare colors in yellow, pink, and in peach. You'll need a bottle of gum glue with a brush, your prepared gum paste in five different colored hues. For drying, you'll need egg molds in two different sizes if you have them. And you will also need a double layer of plastic wrap and a damp towel over top. Lastly, you're going to need a hanging rack to dry your flowers upside down. So we're gonna start with six pieces of white gum paste and using one piece, you'll create a master color in dark coral. I mix the yellow, the pink, and the peach gel pastes until I'm happy with the color. Then I will need varying amounts of the master color into your five gum pastes and you'll end up with an ombre effect. Add a bit of extra yellow to the two lightest colors. And with your coloring finished, let's get to creating your flower. You'll start off with a piece of 18 gauge wire that's been cut into thirds using your needle nose pliers. Bend the end into a hook and close the hook. You'll use a one inch styrofoam ball for the center. Slice it in half with an X-Acto knife. And poke the unhooked end of your wire to create a hole in the center. Use a dab of hot glue on the hooked end and insert it into the styrofoam. Roll a ball of green gum paste about half the size of your original styrofoam ball. Brush the top of the styrofoam with gum glue and press the ball on, creating a rounded top. Next, grab a tiny ball of gum paste and roll it slightly between your fingertips. Get a little bit of gum glue and dab it right into the center, and then press your fingers together and apply that little piece of gum paste to the center. Make sure to press it firmly so it doesn't fall off. Now on to creating the petals. This is how you're going to roll your gum paste each time you make new petals, but I'll only show you once so you don't fall asleep here. You're going to knead your gum paste, flatten it into a rectangle, and roll it so it'll fit the width of your pasta machine. If you're using a KitchenAid, turn it to speed 4, and then you'll run your gum paste through, starting at setting 1, and then going all the way up to setting number 5. You can also roll this by hand to one millimeter or until it's translucent. Roll out your lightest gum paste color and using your 50 millimeter five petal cutter, cut two small blossoms. Then cut one 65 millimeter blossom. I always cut out extras just in case I mess one up, so you'll see me doing that throughout. Next, you'll roll out your second lightest color and cut one 65 millimeter blossom. And then after that, you'll cut two 80 millimeter blossoms. As you work, make sure to cover all of your petals in a double layer of plastic wrap with a damp towel over top so nothing dries out.
First, we'll work with your two smallest petals. Place them on your foam mat and using a large ball tool, half on and half off of the petal, soften the edges. Try not to ruffle them too much. Next, you'll grab your veining tool and move your blossoms to the edge of your mat. Next, you'll roll the veining tool along each petal to create texture. And as soon as you're finished that, you can flip each of the blossoms over. Once you're finished both of the blossoms, you can grab your cell pin and make small circles on each petal to cup them gently upwards. Apply gum glue in a V-shape to the edges of each petal and in the center of both blossoms. Thread one blossom onto your wire and then you'll start attaching your petals. Make sure they're really tight around your center and you're going to be working in a counterclockwise direction. Make sure to really firmly press down both of the edges of your petals as you work your way around the flower. At this point, you can pull the petals around to tighten them even further and smooth out the bottom. And then you'll be threading your next one on to do the same thing. When you're applying your petals, make sure to leave just enough room so you can see the first set peeking beneath. And then again, you'll pull your petals to tighten them and flatten any bulkiness at the base. Next, grab your two medium blossoms. One will be your lightest color and the other your second lightest color. And you'll repeat the same process of shaping these. So you start with softening the edges, then go ahead and texture them with the veiner. and then you'll cup them with the rounded end of your cell pin. Apply gum glue in the same manner, then thread the blossoms onto your wire. Go ahead and attach the petals, leaving enough space for the last set to peek through. Then you're gonna repeat the same thing with the second blossom. Again, go ahead and flatten the bottom so there's no bulkiness. With your final set of petals, you're repeating the same process again. The only difference is that I like to flatten these petals on the top edge so they're closer in shape to my two smaller cutters. Again, you'll soften the edges, texture them, use your cell pin, and then apply your gum glue. Thread those right onto the flower and then attach the petals exactly the same way as you did before, leaving a little space for all the previous petals to peek out. Start again by rolling your next darkest color out of gum paste. Using your small teardrop cutter, cut out 12 petals. Working three at a time, soften the edges. Texture them. Just roll the veining tool back and forth. I like to add pressure on the very edges to make them even thinner, and then use your cell pin to cup them again. Par dry them in the wider part of your egg molds. I use the small ones for your first 12 petals. Once all the petals are shaped and par dried so that they can be set on a flat surface and still hold their shape, Apply a V of gum glue on the bottom two thirds of each petal. Attach your petals. I like to add these organically onto the flower. I don't attach them in the same overlapping pattern like the previous sets of petals. Add 
As soon as you're finished, hang your flower upside down so the petals don't fall off. Roll out your second darkest coral gum paste and cut out the next six petals using the large teardrop cutter. You're also going to roll out your darkest color gum paste and cut out six petals using the same cutter. Again, soften the edges, texture them, and then cup them. You're gonna use your larger egg mold to par dry the first six petals in the same way you did the last. So you're going to par dry your petals in the larger egg mold, again on the wider side. And then when you've prepared your first three darker petals, you're going to dry them just like this, at a 90 degree angle from the other ones so that they dry wider. For your last three darkest petals, you're going to keep the vein side upwards and let them fall naturally into the mold, pressing them together a little bit so that they ruffle. And these guys will be your very outer petals. Once your petals are par dried, you can remove the first nine that are all cupped upwards and then you can apply gum glue to the bottom two thirds in the same V shape as before. Attach all your petals, starting with the ones that are cupped more and then finishing with the three darker ones that were dried on a 90 degree angle. And then go ahead and adjust your petals and hang your flower upside down. Working with your final three petals that are par dried but still malleable, apply a V of gum glue on the bottom third. Press these petals firmly onto your flower and then go ahead and adjust them as you need. You can add small bits of torn paper towel or foam between the petals to give them a little more space while they dry uh, because at this point we're going to be letting it sit upside down for 24 hours before we get to dusting. And now that your flower has dried for 24 hours, we can get onto the final part of the sugar ranunculus, which is the dusting. First, you'll secure a piece of parchment paper to your work surface using tape. You'll also need cornstarch, two flat brushes, a spoon, and a knife. Place a small amount of cornstarch on your work surface. The petal dusts I'm using for this are yellow, warm yellow, orange, hot pink, coral, and moss green. Remove a small amount of each dust with the tip of your knife. We'll start with moss green and dilute it with a bit of cornstarch. Begin applying the color by dabbing it in the center of your ranunculus and brushing the edges of the petals surrounding the center. Next, dilute the yellow dust with a bit of cornstarch. Dab and brush the next few petal layers of your flower. Since we want smooth transitions between each color, I'll mix the warm yellow with the yellow we just used and apply that to the next petal layers. When I'm working, I'm going to continue this method by adding some orange to your mixed color and then dusting that onto the flower. Next, add some hot pink to that mixture and apply that almost to the very edge of the petals.
Finally, you'll add the coral and apply that to the very outer petals and any shadowy areas until you're happy with the way in which it's colored. I've taught you the steps to make this sugar and egg list, but you're going to need both my sugar paste recipe and a list of all the tools to make it easier when you make your own. You can download both in the description box below. If you did enjoy this video, I'd love to know so I can make more content like this. Give me a like down below and don't forget to subscribe for new videos and share it with a friend who would enjoy it. Thanks for watching. See you soon.